All right, then, political scientist, Mr. John Osegi, thank you for your thoughts on that situation. To security matters now, the Islamic State group has released a video of a man it says is its leader vowing to seek revenge for its loss of territory. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi has not been seen since 2014 when he proclaimed from Mosul the creation of a caliphate across parts of Syria and Iraq. While acknowledging the group's defeat at Baghuz, its last stronghold in the region, Baghdadi says that he has had pledges of allegiance from militants in Burkina Faso and Mali. He also talked about the protests in Sudan and Algeria, saying jihad is the only solution to tyrants. Both countries have seen their long-term rulers overthrown this month. It's not clear when the video was recorded, but the Islamic State says it was shot in April. Security expert Chidi Nwanu joins us live on the program to tell us more about this. Chidi, thanks for joining us on Network Africa. What do you think is the significance of this video featuring the leader of the Islamic State at this time when the so-called caliphate has been defeated? Hey, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for having me on. And well, the significance is clear. If you look at the uh, perspectives from, um, from in terms of the defeat of the, uh, the caliphate, this is a way of them pointing out that they haven't been defeated and that they still have a presence, that Baghdadi is still alive, their leadership is still alive. And if you look at the, some of the content, it's uh, kind of trying to point out that they're able to project power beyond their base. They don't need the physical uh, caliphate to do that. So it's, it's, a, it's a fairly expected you know, move from them to, to, to kind of stand up and say, you know, we're not as beaten as you might think we are. One of the worrying things that he did say in the video is he said that he has had pledges of allegiance from militants in Burkina Faso and Mali. Should Africa be worried about this and what steps can the continent's leaders take to prevent the group from, well, gaining a foothold? Well, uh, I think Africa should be worried about a lot of things. This is just one of, of many. Uh, and the, it's not just the, you know, the Burkina Faso and uh, those uh, pledges of allegiances that one should worry about because those are kind of expected. Burkina Faso has already been going down this road, again, due to a very typical mix of poor governance, poor security force response and porous borders, as well as, you know, the, the Islamic insurgency. But also places like DRC have had, you know, alleged uh, Daesh attacks. Uh, the Nigeria element is, is well known. So these things are all very worrying. And what it speaks to is less, you know, the, the power and the reach of Islamic State. It is more about the weakness of, you know, local governments and the weakness of their security forces in that it, it allows openings for these groups to come in. Because even if you look at the issue in Burkina Faso, it's just like the issue in Zamfara. These are all very local issues, you know, talk things about land rights, about uh, opportunities, development and government, lack of governance. Oh, oh, Chidi, you also talked about the protest in Sudan and Algeria, saying jihad is the only solution to tyrants. Do you agree that the protests in Sudan and Algeria are a form of jihad? No, they're, they're, not, they're not a form of jihad yeah. in, in the sense that, we would describe, that we're looking at it from a, a security perspective. In an Islamic perspective, jihad is, is a, a personal struggle, something that you know, people do. So in that context, from a purely Islamic context, you know, any kind of struggle to overcome adversity can be described as jihad. But the jihad he's talking about, violent jihad, you know, war, this is not what... Um, is going on in Algeria and in the Sudan. This is, if, in fact, the very opposite of what, you know, people like al-Baghdadi are looking for. What he's trying to do is to try and hijack these protests, to try and say, to try and use these uh, popular protests to say, we are the only people who can actually protect you against the dictators and to ensure that they don't come back. As you can see in Sudan, you know, recently uh, the protesters attacked an Islamist group because they said they don't want another Islamist government. They don't want, you know, fundamentalists to take over. So, it's, it's very clear that there is a dichotomy between the two points of view, and um, it's unlikely that, you know, you'll be able to convert the popular protest into a jihad. Security expert Chidi Nwaunu, thank you for so much for speaking to us on Network Africa. Thanks for having me.